let's let's start. Uh, now this is this is going to be the agenda. Uh, I just changed the the agenda from what we sent on the on social media to instead of key endpoints to something like cool endpoints. Uh, you know, based on some use cases that I've seen. Uh, but you know, we can we can all go over through uh, some key endpoints as well. Uh, but we'll be seeing, you know, something about metabase, you know, technically speaking, what is the API, how do you make API calls and that, then is what, then is when I'm gonna, you know, dive into some practical uh, methods and do something. Uh, we're gonna do some cool endpoints uh, and then a few security tips and, and then we'll go, uh, you know, uh, to, to the questions. Uh, this is gonna take 20, 30 minutes, nothing more, so you don't get bored uh, fast. Um, and we can address all your questions. Leave your questions in the chat. I will address those at the very, very end. So what is Metabase? You know, for anyone that doesn't know what Metabase is, I'm pretty sure that most of you know, or pretty much 99% of you know what is Metabase at this point, otherwise you, you wouldn't be joining this webinar, is, you know, it's the, the simplest way in which you can ask questions to your data. Um, there's a screenshot over there. That screenshot is pretty, uh, in fact, it's pretty, pretty old, I guess. Um, uh, from for an old version, but actually you can uh, you know deploy Metabase in your uh, own computer, in your Raspberry Pi at home, uh, you know in your uh, data center or your private data center of your company. We have like public companies, very big uh, entities that run Metabase, or you can just you know forget about all that burden and just go to Metabase.com, just click on Get Started, and in five minutes you will have a Metabase instance running on our cloud. Uh, you know, with all the, the, I would say, the best practices uh, for running running the, the application. Uh, I just leave two links there. This presentation probably will be shared at the end of the, you know, at the end of, of the webinar. But there are, these are two, I would say, very important links. The first one is what do we do in our cloud to make the, the cloud very awesome, like absolutely awesome. And it's like all the security practices, all, all that we've been through, you know, uh, this during all these years. Um, so, like, you know, all, all the things that we do in our cloud to make it awesome. And the second one is what sh you should do in case you self-host Metabase to make, you know, a decent uh, Metabase, you know, with all the best practices to, to host it on, on, on your end, right? And this is extremely important that, that you know, that guide is extremely important because I, I see so many instances around the world, so many people that contact us uh, in, our, in the forums, via tickets, that they don't host Metabase in the best way uh, it can be hosted, you know, with some some lackness on some key components, and 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 you should you should do it. Like if you if you uh, want to run Metabase in production, if you want to do it, you know, seriously and in a you know sustainable way, you should follow that guy. You should you know put all the security uh, measures in place, uh, you know, in in the best way possible, so you don't. Uh, your, your customers don't don't complain to you. And if you have any questions around that guide, also, always please contact us. You know, we, we put a lot of time and effort into putting that guide together. Um, all right, let's let's move on. Let's let's go to you know what is Metabase, but now you know in a deep dive, right? Like actually, what what is going on? So Metabase is this thing that you see on the left. You know, it's a web application. So you first need to understand it as a web application. If you've done full stack development at some point, you will understand what I'm saying. But if you haven't done any any kind of you know development at any uh, time, uh, you need to just think about a few things. First thing first is that whenever you go to Metabase, you use your browser, right? You don't use an application. And if you're using an application like a you know a web uh, uh, sorry and a, a mobile application or a tablet application or maybe you know some person might have put Metabase. We saw once that someone uh, wanted to put Metabase on a fridge. I'm not kidding. Like someone put a build Metabase on the refrigerator. Uh, actually, what what you're using is a browser always, no matter where. It's it's always going to be a browser, and the browser is going to be rendering, actually showing stuff, uh, you know, rendering HTML code uh, on your screen, right? And what what the browser is just doing is just using the you know all the components on the front end, which is written on React, and this. Browser is also using the APIs, the APIs of the backend. The backend of Metabase is written in a in a language called Clojure, um, and and this you know this backend exposes exposes APIs uh, on on the REST pattern, right? So your browser is actually calling the APIs, and it's actually rendering those 
results that come from the API uh, that with, with the front end instructions. Uh, I'm gonna show you how that's done in, in just a few minutes. And then what the black what the backend is doing is actually interacting with the place where MetaBase saves all the users, you know, users dashboard questions, like all the entities, uh, which is called the, the application database. And then it's also interacting with the data warehouse, with the actual data warehouse that you connect to, right? That might be, uh, you know, a Redshift, a Postgres, a Trino, a Databricks. Now, uh, you know, we, we're about to release a Databricks driver. And you know all those things. It's, it's that's the data world. So this is exactly what is going on in every single uh, in every single time you click. And this is the interesting part. Like every single time you do a click, you click on a you know on a column, you click on an, on an item, you click on a filter, you click on summarize. Every single time something happens, it is your browser actually hitting these APIs and you know doing operations in this in this databases. I'm not gonna get into you know how the, the the databases things work because that might you know be for another webinar which is way more advanced than this one but this is exactly you know how how everything works at the you know at the of the surface um so what is the api what is this and let me go just one one slide back what, what is exactly this what is exactly this layer that you see over there so that is absolutely every single entity and their functionalities right so Metabase exposes their entities and the functionalities of those entities, right? In that you can you can call from you know from uh, the, your browser, you can call from the cons your your you know your your terminal or your console or your PowerShell uh, you know terminal or, or absolutely anywhere from from actually your code that you write in Python and know like you know the, the interesting and the cool thing about the API is that you can call the API through any any mean and this is this is the most and in fact, uh, when, when I talk to customers, I say that the coolest thing that Metaverse has is that everything is an API. And that is like, that's amazing because you can do whatever you want with the product. And when I mean absolutely anything, you can actually do configurations. Like you can set up Metaverse programmatically. I, in fact, I have a few, um, a few demos about that and I can even share the links. Like you set up Metaverse and once Metaverse says, hey, I'm ready, you can go to Metaverse and like say, okay, cool, create an admin, create a database, connect to it, like everything that is a configuration, you can do it via the APIs. You can actually configure users and permissions. Like uh, we have customers that um, when a new customer um, is created on their backends on their, you know, maybe the, we have a, a lot of customers which are uh, CRM assistants, right? When they, when they have a new customer, they go to Metabase and via the APIs, they create a new group they create new permissions. They assign, you know, permissions to groups. They create new collections. All that is done programmatically without any any human intervening in the process, which is absolutely awesome. You can create also questions and dashboards. Maybe you know uh, someone wants to do um, a, a new a new question, but uh, or maybe you want to say, you know, this person might have this need. So uh, you know, before the user. Uh, actually going into Metabase, you, you go to Metabase via the API and you can create the questions, the dashboards, and even, even you can run those questions in Metabase and send the results to that person uh, completely outside of Metabase. Like that's that's also possible. Um, we had one customer some time back that they actually embedded the Metabase question builder into their own product. And they were running the questions via the API, and they were just sending the results to, to you know to to the to the customers. Uh, they were they were building an audience builder in in their product with Metaverse. That that was absolutely absolutely awesome. You can do also subscriptions. For example, maybe you want to do you know when when someone uh, gets created on your system, maybe you want to say, okay, I'm gonna send you every single day, uh, you know the 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 new uh, the, the the new maybe your new customers or new your new leads. Uh, lots of marketing agencies that, that use Metabase, uh, you know, they, when they have a new customer, they start sending subscriptions. And this all can be done programmatically. And even more, I mean, I'm going to talk about these cool endpoints at the, at the end, but maybe you want to sync a table. Yeah, I mean, there's a new table in the database, you want to sync it, or maybe you want to wipe the cache. All those things can be done programmatically. Also, you can call the API with a user session. We're going to do that right now. Uh, you know, to, to show how this session works, or with an API key, you will, you know, you will be able to create an API key, a perpetual API key, and, you know, call the API with that. The API is 
free, like absolutely free. Uh, you don't, you know, we we don't have as probably other products that, that charge you for using their API. Or APIs is the way we we actually we interact with with the backend. So like we won't be able to charge for that. Um, so you can use the API for free forever, no matter what. Like just just use it. And there are two places in which you can get the the documentation for the API. One is the the, the official API documentation. So you know you go to uh, oops, there we go. Let me you just go to the API documentation. Let me zoom a little bit. Right, and uh, this API documentation gets um, created programmatically when we do a new release. You know, all the entities are here. You can just you know click and see uh, you know everything about the dashboards. You can see the methods, uh, what is the path, uh, what parameters you can pass to the to the endpoints. Uh, or there's another way in which you can see the the, the actual endpoints, and this is the non uh, I would say the non official one, and it's the one that our developers use. Uh, and you can actually go to your database instance. Uh, I have it here, and just click. You know, just go to your database instance. I have a, a local database instance running on my machine, and you can say, you know, uh, the, the URL of the instance slash API slash docs. You click in here, and voila, there's an open API compatible or open API you know documentation here, and you can see exactly how APIs work. You have some examples. You have some schemas. This is pretty cool because it's like you know, su super nerd nerdy things uh, happening, and and you know the, the you know the, the dark theme also is pretty cool. But actually, you can see everything in here, right? And it's like an, an um, it's a bundle of documentation that you have on your instance. If you don't, maybe you're running Metabase in a in a in an isolated environment. We have tons of customers that run Metabase, you know, banks, uh, military hospitals that run metabase in completely air-gapped environments and they, they need to do see the documentation. Here it is. Uh, so this is the non-official API. Uh, feel free to, to come here and, and check it out. Um, let me go back to my uh, brief presentation. Um, there we go. So you know how, how to make an API call, how to how to actually make it. Um, so as I was saying, the, the API calls are done Every single time you interact with metabase, there's like no no difference in the way uh, there we go. Uh, there's no difference in the way we use the metabase API and the browsers use the metabase API. So I'm gonna go back to the browser, right? This is my this is my local metabase instance running on my local machine. I'm gonna log out, and the best way in which you can see how APIs uh, do work is opening your browser developer tools. Like again, you have the documentation, you can see that, you have the, the, the non-official documentation that I just showed, but the best way in which you can see how to use the API with practical examples is to actually use Metabase and look at the browser development tools at the same time. How do you do that? Well, you just go to your browser, no matter the, the browser, you know, if all the browsers have a development, development tools. Uh, you click here, you go to uh, more tools usually, and in more tools, you have developer tools. Okay, you click in developer tools, and then you go to the network tab that you see over here. You know, there are lots of tabs. You go to the network tab. And when you go to the network tab, you might want to do a few things. For example, I just disable the cache just for, you know, testing reasons. It, you don't need to do this. Like, you can actually leave the cache uh, on. Uh, but you need to make sure that you know this it's like recording and that the logs don't uh, they, like you, you want to preserve the logs okay you got, you want to actually see everything that happens on the logs. So I, I mean if you have this disabled, the log will clean on every single interaction and you don't want to do that. So I will leave this preserve log on. So just you know the very basics, how do you actually authenticate to metabase to, because, because to use the APIs, you need an authentication. You need like a token that gets passed on every single call to the API. So how do you do that? Let's authenticate to this Metabase instance and see how Metabase, I mean, how the, how the, the authentication API works. So, you know, I just put my username and my password. I click on sign in. And first, first thing that happens, you know, I get, and let me, um, there we go. I'm gonna zoom a little bit more. What just happened is that my browser called 
you know, slash API slash session, it did a post call, a post request, and um, this post request <clears throat> returned fine, gave me a 200. Sorry, I need to drink some water. <coughs> ah, sorry about that. <coughs> ah, gosh. There we go. You're fine now. We, we can keep on. So the browser just sent me a 200 saying everything's fine, everything worked. And when I see what I sent to MetaBase, I can click on the payload and see that I sent, I click on view source, I sent a username, I sent a password. Please don't, don't say anyone, you know, my password. Um, and then I sent a remember false. Remember false, you know, it's not needed. In fact, if we go to the official documentation, let's go down to the official documentation and let's see the session API. Let's see how this works. We just use this and look at this. It says username needs to be a non-blank blank string, password needs to be a non-blank string, but request, you know, can be whatever. Um, so this is this is what just happened. You know, this is what we, we just did. Uh, we don't have, as, as you can see, there are some things that are, um, you know, in, in the docs, things that are not in the docs. And this is why I strongly, strongly encourage all of you to go and actually use the metabase, you know, the network tab of your browser so you can see what is actually being passed, okay? So uh, let's go back to the to metabase here. So I just send this payload and the browser, uh, the, the, sorry, the API returned to me with some ID and this GUID that I see here. This is like a, a GUID structure. And you might be wondering, why, why did the browser send you that? Well, why did the API send you that? Well, this is this is what it's called the session token. This is like the, 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 the actual like code that I will use in any subsequent calls to Metabase. So Metabase can uh, identify me. Metabase knows that if I go to the other endpoints, to the, all the other endpoints with this ID over here, Metabase knows that I am the admin. I, I, you know, I authenticated as an admin, so Metabase now knows that I am the admin. And, and how do you call again all the subsequent APIs? Cool. Then let's see. For example, let's see. Um, let's see recent views or popular. This, this is a, this is a cool. One. This, all the things that just appeared here, all the, you know. All the cards, dashboards, you know, questions, everything that appeared here. This is what we call, you know, the popular items, the things that that we we suggest the user to click. So if I go to popular items and I see the response, look at the response. Uh, sorry, this is another. Sorry, my 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 mistake. This is the recent views. There we go. Sales percent. Yeah, this is a recent views. So this API here, that is, you know, slash API slash activity slash recent views which gives me this thing over here. There's the response, recent views, you know, sales by coordinates, sales per state, sales for each product category, exactly this. The way that Metabase called this was, and look at this, I did a get request to this endpoint, but the way I sent the, the, the ID to Metabase, for Metabase to, to know who I am was via a header. So I had to send the header to Metabase and look at what just is, look what's here. So I go to request headers, I go to cookie, and I see that there's a cookie called metabase.session with the GUI that Metabase gave me when I, when I authenticated. Let's do this, and this is the cool part. Let's do this with, uh, with an application. I have an applic a local application called Bruno. It's uh, the same you can do with uh, Postman. There are many, many applications that you can use to do the exact same thing that I just did or that I'm going to do. And so you can, you can do this via the terminal. Like actually you can do it with absolutely anything. Let's, uh, I'm going to create a collection. Let's call it webinar. Uh, it's going to be in my uh, downloads folder where I put everything. Cool. And now that I created this, this collection, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on the browser, you know, authenticating and then uh, telling Metabase to give me all these items, I'm going to do it with this uh, program over here. So you can use a program like this one or like Postman or anything so you can learn the same things. Let's do a new request. So the first request that I'm going to do is going to be called authentication. And the authentication, as we saw, was a post request 
to this endpoint over here. I'm going to call this and I'm going to do post request to slash API slash session. Let's create this. Yeah, safe. Uh, yeah, yep. Going to promote. Cool. Nice. I don't think that I can. Uh, no, I cannot like um, increase the, the font size. So sorry for people that are not seeing this exactly. So as I was saying, I go to the API session, and the way that I pass the username and the password was, I you know copy the payload. I go to the body of this request. I say that I'm gonna send a JSON, which is this structure over here. You can prettify it, and in fact, I'm gonna delete this last remember key that uh, MetaBase was passing here in, in the front. The actual browser was passing this. I'm going to just delete it. Let's now uh, send this request. So I'm going to do a post to session with this body over here. Let's send this request and same thing happened. Same thing that I got here. See, I mean, it's a different one, as you can see. Like there, there were two authentications. The first authentication that I did give, gave me this session token. And this new authentication that I'm doing here gives me this session token. So I'm going to copy now this session token that MetaBase gave me for authenticating. And I am going to hit the recent views endpoint. So MetaBase gives me this, exactly this. I'm going to do a new, a new um, request. This is going to be recent views. And I'm going to copy, um, going to copy, you know, the endpoint over here. Let's put this over here, create. And now let's use this session token that we got to get the exact same information as I got via the browser. How do you do that? OK, so it's a get request. It does not have anything on the body. In, in you know the previous, the previous endpoint had needed a body, needed some, some structure to be passed. And here's the trick. You go to the headers. You add a new header called cookie. And then you say that the way that you want to you know, call this API is with a cookie named metabase.session equals to the, you know, the, the, the thing that we got from the authentication. So this is the way that I'm going to authenticate to metabase. Let's click on send. And exactly the same. I just got you know, all this, the same thing that I got on the browser but now via you know, another application called Bruno. As I was saying, you can do this programmatically via Python, Node, uh, Java, .NET, any, anything you want. You can do this on the terminal. You can, you can do the exact same thing that I did via any client. And this is the magic thing of APIs. Now let's do the exact same thing, but instead of using a session token, as I am using here, let's do the same thing via the, via the feature that MetaBase has, which is called the MetaBase API tokens, API keys, OK? So I have the feature over here. Let me close this down. I need to go to Settings, Admin Settings, go to Authentication, and then to API keys. And now I need to create an API key. OK, let's, click, let's create this API key called MetaBase Admin API key. Again, you can put any name. And the interest again. This is this is very uh, important. This this thing that I'm I'm about to say. When you use session tokens, session tokens, the sessions, the, the you know authenticating as a user and then using a session token, you will inherit a group permission. Okay, but when you use API keys, API keys are assigned to groups. And although you might say, hey, Liz, you're you're doing you're saying exactly the same. In those two phrases, uh, there's a slight difference, which is when you authenticate as a user and you use a session token, for example, if you want to uh, use in MetaBase, uh, we have a feature called role level security that it's a paid feature. If you want to use role level security, API keys won't inherit the role level securities and uh, the role level security properties because API keys are only tied to groups. There's no role level security. Role level security is only for users, right? Impersonation, another way of you know, doing role level security, is also for users. So bear in mind that when using API keys, API keys is a really good thing 
in case you want to do, for example, um, um, a, a headless browser that navigates to Metabase in order to click some stuff and maybe capture screenshots of dashboards. This is a really good thing, you know, for API keys or for doing programmatic stuff without having to go to, you know, through the authentication. Or uh, there's a, you know, this, this feature API keys, we put it together because we had many users, many customers that used single sign-on, right? They use SAML or they use JWT or maybe they use Google. They use a lot of, you know, um, um, they, they use single sign-on, but they couldn't do programmatic things because they needed, it was really, really complex to get a session token when they use single sign-on. So we put this feature together for them to use, you know, the APIs of Metabase without having to, uh, you know, keep using users that authenticated via username and password. So bear that in mind when you use the API keys. I'm gonna ass assign this API key to an administrator and I'm gonna click on create. Once I click on create, I get the, the API key. So now let's call the, the, the API, this recent views API, but instead of using a session token, we're gonna use the API key. How do we do that? Let's you know create another one. It's gonna be recent views. Oops, with API key. I'm gonna, uh, let's me, whoops. I, let's put this in a text editor because I just, there we go. Okay, um, and this, the, the request URL, I forgot the request URL. I'm, I'm a genius, uh, forgive me on that. There we go, recent views, the request URL is this one. Let's put it back together. Let's click on create, and now let's pass to this endpoint the API key. So instead of a session token, we're gonna pass the API key. How do you do that? Well, you go to the headers, you click on add a header, and if I'm not mistaken, the API key is X API key. Please forgive me if this is not the correct header. Uh, I might look at in the in the in the documents. So I do a get request into this endpoint with this header and this API key, and I didn't get any, any recent views. And this is interesting. You might say, hey, what just happened? You know, what just happened? Because like, I kind of understand why I got, you know, this with this endpoint, I hit this API and I get all this, you know, all these cards, but when I hit it with the, uh, you know, with, with um, the API key, I get none. Well, this is an, uh, another example of, you know, that an API key is uh, tied to a group and that uh, a session token is tied to a user. Recent views is an endpoint that we run for every single user. So we actually go to the user's history and we look what the user did. So if you think about it, this endpoint over here doesn't have, I mean, this, 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 set, this API key doesn't have any recent views because it's, it's a group, right? So a group cannot have any, any recent views. But let's test with another endpoint, just, you know, for um, uh, something that will return us something, you know, decent. Let's, for example, you know, get the, um, I'm gonna click everything and I'm gonna refresh. Let's see the, the collection tree, right? Like all these collections that you see over here. How do you see that? Let's hit this API slash API slash collection slash root. Let's go to this over here. And now let's, you know, Look at what just happened. I got the our analytics collection, this one over here, and you know all the IDs and everything. Let's let's see another one. Uh, for example, let's see the collection tree. Let's use this, paste it, and you'll see that now I get all the collection trees, right? With and again, I can I can keep calling the the endpoints to um get the items get only the dashboards get only the questions i mean anything we have lots of customers that transverse the tree of collections cards dashboards and everything else uh, via via the api one cool example of this is uh, a project that i did some time ago that it's called uh, metagraph you can actually metagraph over here you can actually see that i mean you can even download this we had tons of people that uh, asked us for you know i want to see uh, my my cards in which dashboards they are located. So I made this project in order to you know using the MetaBase API, you can um, you know go through collections, uh, go through dashboards, and check the dashboards and such. And then it will build you a beautiful um, graph in Neo4j. This graph database 
and you can actually see where your questions are, where your tables are, you know, everything about, you know, depend this dependency graph uh, that you see in this picture. So all this was done via the API. I haven't uh, updated this project in some, in a while. So, you know, if you see it, if you use it and you, you hit some issue, uh, please forgive me. I haven't uh, updated it in a while, but this was done entirely, entirely with the MetaRace API. Okay, cool. Let's move on now and let's keep on with the presentation. I'm, I'm going to be super short so we can actually go to the questions. Um, so cool endpoints. I mean, what, what are the endpoints that you can use? And again, I've just covered a few endpoints uh, in this demo. So for example, you can do stuff like create a model in MetaBase and materialize it uh, once the data pipeline is finished. So let's say that you have a data pipeline that runs every single day and you want to, uh, you want your users to use the latest and greatest of that, of, of that data, right? How do you do it? Well, once the data pipeline is finished, when your ATL's ELT finishes, you call the MetaBase API and you say, hey, I want to build a model and persist it. It will be like a materialized view in the database, you know, let lingo. So you actually hit the MetaBase API and you actually do a materialized view by hitting the MetaBase API. That's a really cool, cool example. Uh, another really cool example is that you can tell that um, tell MetaBase that maybe a table has changed. Maybe a, you know there's a new field. Maybe you know there's there's new values in in the in the table. You can hit the slash API slash notify endpoint. Again, it's documented over there, and you can tell MetaBase that something has changed in the data warehouse. That's also a really cool endpoint for data engineers uh, in, in in this webinar. The one that I mentioned in the first place, which is once a new customer gets created on your uh, on your application, you go to MetaBase and you create a new collection and a new group for them. You know, as soon as they land into MetaBase, they are assigned to their own collection and they you know they just can see what whatever you assign to them. Just just that really cool as well. And even if you use some of the paid features of MetaBase, which is for example, group mapping, you can actually, when the user does a single sign-on into MetaBase, they get assigned to the group automatically without you having to do you know, anything. But the creation of the group and the creation of the collection, that, that is done via the API. Another really cool example that, that we just came up uh, with uh, just a few days ago. Let's say that uh, you want to do some testing. You know, you want to do uh, whenever, um, you know, you, you want to send an email to some customer, right, with, with their data. Well, you can actually do that. You go to MetaBase, you go to the dashboard, and then uh, you, you put some filters, and then you, you use a test uh, endpoint that we have on the subscriptions, and you send the email to the user with just the data that they need, or maybe to you just to test something. Okay, so all that is also done, all can be done. And the last one, which is also really cool, uh, you can go to uh, one um, dashboard, and you can say, hey, I wanna, I wanna get the, the, the visualization of this chart, uh, but on, on the backend, right? Without having to go to the you know, snipping tool or to do a screen capture. I wanna do, I wanna get it in the backend. I wanna get the, the PNG, the actual you know, chart. Uh, so you can do that as well, like programmatically. Maybe you know, put things on, on some, some code and then send that. We have people that do that. One other, you know, one, one other cool example that I haven't mentioned is we have so many people that call us saying, you know, MetaBase, the subscri subscriptions are really cool, but they are not the exact same, the exact, exact same pixel perfect as the ones that uh, I get on the browser. And there's a reason for that, which is we don't have the same rendering engine on the front end, which is your browser, and on the back end. So how do people manage that? Well, it's pretty simple. They use the APIs to, you know, um, they use the APIs and some, some, some code to actually authenticate into MetaBase and go uh, to, to a dashboard and do a screen capture of that dashboard. Like, you know, they, they kind of print as if you were printing with, you know, printing to PDF in your browser. They just put that into PDF and they just send that PDF to C-level, right? We have a very big customer that does that. Um, and, and they, you know, they, they want their C-level to see the exact same dashboard that they see in MetaBase, but on their emails and they, they use the APIs for that and, and the API keys. Really, really cool example. Last, uh, and let's go to the questions. You know, just security tips. You know, API keys won't rotate. Please take that into account. So you need to rotate them. Like, actually, it's a, it's a good security practice. You know, uh, you don't want the API keys to leak at any point. If those leak, you need, you know, you actually need to rotate. So, you know, rotation of API keys is pretty simple. You can actually use the MetaBase API 
to, to rotate those keys, right? So you can actually go to, with the MetaVis APIs, rotate those keys and put those keys on a vault, right? On an actual vault. Also, as you know, second item, save the keys on a vault. You know, it's a good security practice to use a vault, you know, someplace where you can monitor the, the lifetime of those keys, who use them, like actually use that. And the last, and you know, the last but not least, always, always, and this is a, a, a recommendation that we put on the MetaVis, um, uh, the use MetaVis in production guide, always use a reverse proxy on top of MetaVis. You know, MetaVis comes with a web server, but it, you know, the best security practice that I can give you is put something on top of MetaVis that does, you know, the work of our reverse proxy. Like for example, monitor the connections. Like when there's a new connection, someone that uses an API key or something like there's a new connection, the reverse proxy will say this, this connection comes from this IP and monitor those IPs, okay? Again, I've seen, I've seen it all. We have customers all around the world, uh, you know, very, very big, 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 big companies using MetaVis public, you know, some military uh, departments uh, that are using also MetaVis. Like they all uh, use the latest and greatest on security and this would be a really good recommendation. Having said this, I'm just gonna stop and go through the questions and also drink some water because I've been talking for 40 minutes. <laughs>